Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's so exciting to kind of see you virtually and uh, be part of your class today. Um, welcome today to a special edition of Minecraft Education as we learn about Manitowabi Aki, the place where the creator sits. Now, this is going to be a really cool interactive uh, Minecraft world, but it's going to be different than what you're normally used to when we play Minecraft. But I thought we would get, you know, we're, we're just getting settled in here. We'll talk about that part later on, and I'm hoping that we can kind of interact with the little things. So um, there is this lovely little link that you can see right here, http slash slash the cc dot page slash t2b. So that is how we're going to kind of talk to each other and interact. And so I thought we could test this out. So what you can do is put that that little um, uh, H, uh, uh, URL link right into your web pages. You can pull that up and uh, we'll move on to the first question to kind of get us rolling. And then in about four minutes or so, maybe ten, five minutes ish, we'll get started with the real presentation as we go. So if we can ask that first question, the question is, what is Turtle Island? Hmm. Now you might have heard this before. Maybe you've done some of the YouTube videos or the lessons that were uh, pre-taught already with it, with it. And if you haven't, maybe you've heard this name before. Um, maybe it's kind of in that indigenous realm of things as you uh, see things. Um, so if you want to put that form link in http slash double slash the cc dot page slash t2b. And let's see what responses we can get in here. What answers do you have? What do you think? What is Turtle Island? As we go forward here. Hmm. I know this is one that, that, that happens quite a lot. You might have seen it before. Maybe put your name in there. Oh, I got some responses coming in. I see Kevin. Uh, you've, you've responded in there. That's awesome. I'm just going to see what, what else what other ones can come up into the form um, as we go along. So, so no, so far, no one's got the right answer yet. I, I, I do see, Kevin, that you've, you've put something there, but maybe you want to think a little bit more about what the term Turtle Island might be. But I'll, I know we have nine classes joining, um, and we'll see where that goes. And uh, and I got my crew in behind here as we start this off, so uh, we'll have some fun as we go along. Um, but let's see, what else? What other, who else has an answer about what do you think Turtle Island is? Gaber, you said hi, that's amazing. Hi back, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, so, so far, so we got some good answers in here that thinking about, about the, the name, and you're probably wondering, but I want you to maybe, maybe this is this is a clue for you. It's related to a place where you live right now. That might help you out. Aditya, yes. Earth. Oh, Josh, well, that's a good guess. Uh, a little bit more specific, closer to where where you are. Oh, Gaber's got. I think yeah, Gaber, you you have you have the right answer. I'm not going to say it right now, but we'll give it a couple more minutes or maybe more seconds as we go through it. I have a couple more questions as we go. Uh, okay, so are you ready for the answer? We're gonna get a big drum roll. And the answer is, next slide. <laughs> it's coming, there we go. North America, hi Amar, <laughs> how are you doing? It is great to be here with everyone. I was, I was trying really hard not to give that guess out there. I need the answer, I just want you all to know that. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and so Reese, yes, the indigenous people call continent North America, while others say, uh, such as Ojibwe, use it for a different name. That's awesome. So we have some people who know know a lot more things that are out here, right? Okay. Oh, Miss Van uh, Veen Camp, a big shout out. She's the best. That's from Mohammed. So love that you're here. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next question. Amar, did you want to do the questions as we go forward? Oh, you're on. Yeah, absolutely. I, hey, I caught it. I don't know 50 cents. I caught that one. Okay, what are some of the sacred animals of the Anishinaabe? What are some of the sacred animals of the Anishinaabe? I'm going to give you a really cool hint. We're really mean. There's not a single sacred animal in that picture. 
So go ahead. No, not 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 one sacred animal is in that is in that one there. <laughs> right. Uh, I would think at least one of them, but no. Um, no, but there are have... there are some sacred animals that you can think of. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, okay. I'll get I'll give a hint there, Amar. I I know your hint already. I'm reading your mind right you now. You know my hint? Question. It's about the last question. I know this. It was about the last question. That's right. That might be one of the ones that you might want to think about. That was one of the last questions that we had. That might be one of the animals. Why don't we wait another five seconds and then I'm going to give us that drum roll and we are going to see the answer. Am I cut off scared? What is the answer? The buffalo, the eagle, the bear, the beaver, the wolf, the turtle, and the sasquatch are some of the sacred animals for the Anishinaabe culture in particular. Um, did you, uh, which one is your, one of your favorites, Jonathan? Um, my favorite is the buffalo, just because I know how, how endangered some of these species are um and 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 where and how much we've lost because of the buffalo but the buffalo also gave a lot of um a lot of things to our indigenous uh population and and and, and their spirit and their 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 things were part of everything in life that was here but um i love this i love the sam uh the answers that that some people have been giving in here too what's your favorite i was gonna go with the turtle just because i know the story about us taking over its back and just being thankful in that regards that thank you for having us as a spirit animal of the land letting us stay on that back that's that was my answer i like your answer a lot more to be honest um, let's uh let's go over to the next question or i noticed that we are two minutes over do we have time for one more or should we go straight in okay this is the last one this is the absolute last one then why is tobacco important for the Anishinaabe. Hopefully you had a chance to check out some of the videos we've sent. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about the culture in your classroom as well. Why is tobacco important for the Anishinaabe? And this this is really interesting for me. Um, I was talking about this with a friend the other day, Jonathan, and he was mentioning how tobacco is poisonous, which it can be if you're using it with chemicals like cigarettes. But the, this has such a, also a strong medicinal, relaxant quality when it's used appropriately. Um, I, I found that to be interesting. I'm not sure if you know too much more about that. Well, yeah, and and the the importance of this is a very important plant, and and as far as and we'll learn more about it as we go through it. So, um, you know, I, I love some of the answers. There, there's been one one answer already by uh, Kalua uh, Kalua who has answered it here. Um, San has answered it correctly as well. But uh, it is a very very important plant, and it's a it's a pure plant too, right? So you're talking about the we talk about tobacco in in in, in itself in some other ways, but this is about the pure plant itself. Awesome, thank you. Why don't we do a drum roll? And the answer is great job, Reese. You just got it there right before the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gift for knowledge, teaching, or medicine. It's also a way to communicate that you need help. If you need help from someone, you give them tobacco not only as a way of saying thank you for the help you're about to receive, but also to let them know, like, I need some knowledge. I need something. Please take it. Like, it's it's a lot. Um, and with that, Jonathan, are we ready to go? We are ready to go. So uh, before we get started, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully I pick the right screen to share and we're all good. <laughs> um, but a big shout out to uh, Mrs. Sain's class. I know uh, 
you're, you're out there watching and, and there were some really great answers, right? From Anushka, uh, use it as a gift. Um, and then we have Charlie, they put, they do throw it in the fire and we'll learn more about that as we go along. So um, I would like, as I said before, I'd like to welcome you to our Manitowabi Aki, the place where the creator sits and uh, this amazing Minecraft presentation that we're going to get into. Um, but before we get into the game, we want to do some, some teaching around it and some things. This is going to be a very different type of experience than, than going in and playing. There is some things that we need to learn and understand. But before we get started, um, it is amazing to see uh, we are the Cobblestone Collective. And uh, together we are here to present some of these wonderful workshops and help your teachers out with some of the lessons that are here. So thank you so much to uh, that as well. But I would like to introduce ourselves. Um, Amar, why don't you go first and say who you are? And I know people have already met me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. So my name's Amar. I used to work with Microsoft for a few years. Minecraft is a passion of mine, and this world is so amazing. I can't wait to just dive into it. So why don't we get going with that, Jonathan? Yeah, and so my name is Jonathan. I'm an EdTech consultant, and uh, I didn't work for Microsoft, but I do love Minecraft. And, uh, you know, I love being out in the outdoors and especially learning from our Indigenous elders and, and those around us. So before we get started, I do think it's important that we do acknowledge the land in which we sit. Uh, so Ani, which is hello in, in Anishinaabek, uh, I'm coming to you from the lands of the Mississauga of the Credit. So I come from you on the treaty lands of 13A, Treaty 19 and 14. I know where you're situated uh, can be all over the place. I know one of the Quebec's uh, treaties is the Williamson Treaty um, and part of uh, the Peace and Friendship Treaties. And so it is important that you learn some of these treaties that are around you and recognize what they mean. Um, you can take a look at uh, whose land is it.ca. Um, so the people in which I am situated on are the Anishinaabek, the Huron Windets, the Hananausi, the Ojibwe and Chippewa people, as well as the Metis and those who have lived before. The home in which I, I am centered on is the Mississauga of the Credit. So this land is important. You'll see the land where I live right behind me. This is part of the uh, the Bruce Trail in which I walk, which I take care of, in which I pass on to my, my, my family to learn about the cedars and the medicinal um, trees that are around us. It's important that we take care of this land so that we have it for future generations. And so I say this land acknowledgement to you, all these students, to learn more about the land in which you are on. So I would like to know, as we're into this form, you've you've started typing this in, and if you haven't, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, you can type in the cc dot page slash tb two, or say t two b. I'm a little sometimes I mess up my my words in there. Um, tell us where are you from and what grade are you in. So that, let's get used to that form. You can get right in there. What, where are you from? What grade are you in? Um, you can even tell us your teacher's name if you wanted to. We'll give shout outs as we go along. I know there's been some really great people already in here. Um, Ms. Veen uh, Camp's class. Oh man, you've been amazing so far. Ifra, I love the fact that you've been in there shouting out to your teacher as well. Um, but let us know what grade are you there and where are you actually from? Kayla, Canada and grade six. Where exactly in Canada though, Kayla? Maybe you want to tell us that <laughs> part because I'm in Canada as well. I'm in Milton, Ontario. <laughs> and I know Amara, you're just you're just like down the or west to the road of me here in Ontario as well. I'm Trash running. is in grade six. Sorry, Amar. Oh, go ahead, keep going, Jonathan. Miss Giada's class, shout out to you. Thanks for joining us. We're coming in from Montreal, Cedar Crest, grade six. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I think Tania, Tanias. Yeah. Oh, Sophia's from Toronto, grade six. Yeah, we got some grade six from Toronto. That's awesome. Nice. So, oh, here we here we come. Miss Gianna is the best. Just letting everyone know, according to to what we have here in the uh, the chat. <laughs> Oh, that don't okay. start that contest. Don't start that contest right now. Oh, no, that's going to go on forever in there, I think. Um, so I, I've already talked to you kind of about the land acknowledgements and why I think the land's important. But can you tell me, what does it mean to take care of the land? Hmm, that's a, that's a very tough question to think about. But I know, I know many of us are ready for that. What does it mean to take care of the land? 
Amar, do you have any ideas that, that, that might spur some of that conversation? Well, that, take care of a lot. It can mean so many different things. What, what it means to me is to take care of what I'm borrowing, because this life really isn't mine or yours, Jonathan, right? Someday I'm going to be gone. Maybe my kids are going to take it. Maybe someone else will be there. But I just want to make sure that it's still there for them. That's what it means to me. Um, love to hear what it means to our students, though. What do you think it means? And wow, we have people joining us from all the way from Abu Dhabi. We got people in the Emirates. We've got someone from Pakistan. Like, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I know COVID is like, it has impacted us in so many different ways, but one thing I really like is to see everyone virtually connecting these days. So thanks for joining us. But what does, oh, I love it. Uh, Alexandra said it means to protect the land. Costa is telling us it means not to damage or remove plants and trees. Um, Joshua's got a nice thought going on there. Maybe to water the plants, use less packaged food because of garbage and plastic. Liliana is saying help the environment. Love these ideas, phenomenal. Love them, love them, right? And, and, that's, and that's the point of our, of our, as we learn from our Anishinaabeg elders, the land is part of everything that we have. And the land is only, that relationship between the land and, and who we are is so vital. It's part of, it's part of my, my, my mental health. It's how I heal. It's how I take care of myself. And so I'm loving, all these responses, um, you know, about taking care of the environment, about not breaking things, about not, uh, you know, when we even when we enter into this Minecraft world, about not blowing it up. You know, we've had conversations with with uh, with my with my own students about that. Okay, let's go on to another one, and this might be a little tougher to think about. Do you know what a land acknowledgement is? Do you know what a land acknowledgement is? Now, I said one at the beginning, but do you know what it actually means to have a land acknowledgement and what it gives? Hmm, that's something to think about as we as we come along. And Reese, yeah, so going back to the land, strength and growth and respect for everything. And I'm wondering if that might help us tie into what the land acknowledgement is and what it's meant to be. So let's see what happens out here. And this is part of our lessons as we go through uh, Manitowabi Aki to learn about uh, learn about the things in which we are um, taken care of and why we are here. And that, that land acknowledgement is important to think about. But do you know what that is? Okay, Costa, no, that's no problem. No, I don't know what it is. That's good to know. It's okay. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll or a couple more seconds, not minutes. I always say minutes, but. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it's something honestly I haven't thought too too much about it myself, Jonathan, and I'm I'm a little embarrassed to say that. Um, take that time to reflect. What do those words mean? I, I know a, a lot of schools across Canada now, if not all of them, do have a land acknowledgement in the morning. But think about what you're hearing. Reflect on what those words mean. I know I haven't taken too much time to do that, and I'm gonna do that right now myself. Yeah, so uh, Vasco to cherish the land that is part of it. Yeah, Kayla to acknowledge and say thank you. Yeah, um, awesome. So part of the land acknowledgement, I'm going to share mine again. So part of the land acknowledgement is in first, first and foremost, is in uh, truth and reconciliation. Now that's a huge, two huge words to talk about the truth and reconciliation. So as settlers onto this land, we have Yes, Reese, to recognize the First Nations and to respect the people who are here first. That is a perfect response. And part of that reconciliation is understanding that as settlers, we've come to this land and we we destroyed it. We took we didn't we didn't take we took it for granted. And so um, understanding all those that were that were here before us, but it goes deeper than that. It's understanding that. There is knowledge to be shared from our elders that were here before us, that there is, an, there is other ways of knowing things and learning. And so part of that acknowledgement is understanding the impact in which we've, we've learned and to acknowledge that our elders and knowledge keepers know things that we need to, need, we can take and learn from. Um, and so 
that's why I put in mind talking about the treaties. I talk about the peoples who were here before me and I talk about the importance of this land and what it means to me. And so I do encourage you as a class to keep looking about it and learning about it. And when you're in Manitowabiaki, there is there is a land acknowledgement that's in there uh, for you to to uh, to learn about. So I'm going to pause for a minute, only a minute though, and and uh, so I can share you a story. And I hope you're okay with me sharing a story with you because I think it sets the tone for what we're going to learn. And this story is actually a creation story, and it's a story that has been passed down from uh, from Anishinaabe elder to Anishinaabe to to other Anishinaabe to and to the world around us. And storytelling is a great way of understanding knowledge. And so I want to pass on that storytelling to you. Um, and so the story is uh, of Turtle Island. And we heard about Turtle Island being North America. Uh, and it does vary from different indigenous communities. Um, but most of them, they'll have very similar, similar ideas and thoughts. So in Ojibwe, the oral traditions, the story, the story of Turtle Island begins with a flooded earth. The creator had cleansed the world of feuding peoples in order to begin life anew. Some animals survived the flood, such as the loon, the muskrat, and the turtle. Nanabush, or sometimes known as uh, Wazajak in the Cree tales, or Nanabuz, he's a supernatural being who has power to create life and other things. Um, but he's also known as a trickster. Like a, he, he kind of he kind of is a little devious and makes jokes and tries to get people to do things that he doesn't want to do. And so Nanabush asks the animals to swim deep beneath the water, right? So you can imagine the flooded earth, this flooded path, and, he, and, and they want to go deep into the earth to collect the soil that he was going to use to recreate the world that's around him. So one by one, the animals tried, but one by one, they failed. The last animal that tried, the muskrat, well, it was underwater for such a long, long time. And when it resurfaced, the little animal had wet soil in its paws. Unfortunately, the journey took the muskrat's life, but the creature did not die in vain. So Nanabush took the soil and put it onto a turtle's back. And this became known as Turtle Island, the center of creation. And so this, this story that I told you about is how uh, the Anishinaabek have seen North America and, and where North America has come from as we, as we know it. So I'm gonna ask you another question before we get into showing you the world. Who helped make Turtle Island? So now you, now you just heard my story, who helped to make Turtle Island? There was, I think three, four people I might've mentioned who helped actually make Turtle Island. This will be the last question, then we'll actually get diving into the world that's around us. And Tasso, I can see your comment. You're doing great. You're typing in there, right? Um, and I don't know if my, there we go. My form came back. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed that story, Liliana. One more time, I'm just going to repeat the question. Who helped make Turtle? island i know one of the names that stuck out to me was with the men yeah started with an n and i can see some great answers from joshua charlie maui edward okay we'll give you one more second Maybe Amar, you can give me my, my drum roll. All right, incoming. Ah, uh, okay, so I don't actually have an answer slide like, like Amar did. So uh, the turtle, the muskrat, Nanabush, the loon were the four characters that were part of it. Um, and Nanabush is, is very similar to, to a god or a goddess in a way, but uh, he's more of a, a spiritual being or an animal that was put in place. Okay, so we are going to learn about this amazing place called Manitowabi Aki, or the place where the creator sits. And if you want to actually research where this place is, it is in Canada. It is in, it is in uh, Manitoba, sitting right at a place called The Forks. And so these pictures are actually from a colleague of ours, 
um, where the Red River and the Asobuin uh, rivers meet, and that's where they're called the, the forks. Um, you'll notice when you go into Manitowabi Aki that the, the river is to the north of where you are. Uh, it is a very different river. Uh, it doesn't look like any Minecraft river that you've ever seen. Um, and you can see the pictures here on the side. It's kind of brownish and, and muddy. And it's, it, apparently it's very muddy because these two rivers meet up. You're also going to be learning about this amazing place called the Petroforms. And these are actually pictures of the Petroforms that we're going to go to. And they're 2,500 year old stones. 2,500 year old stones. And so uh, these things, the, these creations tell that story that I just told you about the creation of, of the world. And uh, among other, other stories that the Anishinaabek have uh, to be told. Um, and as you go, we have some people that you're going to meet along the way. And I think these people are important to learn about because if you ever get lost in Manitowabiaki, which is very easy, I've gotten lost, it's okay, you can meet some of our, uh, of our guides. And so this is Bobby Jo, she'll be wearing a purple and blue dress, um, and Corey, they're your two guides that will give you information along the way, as well as your ancestral elders. So we have Grandma Chickadee, we have Diane, Isaac and Vern. And so um, what's really cool, and this can be for your teachers, and maybe you've seen some of the videos already about tobacco and water. Um, those were the real people that we're gonna meet in Minecraft world. So you met Grandma Chickadee on a YouTube video. You met um, Isaac talking about the birch bark canoes and, and tobacco. And so we're gonna meet with them as they go along. So today we aren't going to be able to get through everything um, as we go through here. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to show you how to play, but and then we're going to, we're going to play in the world and see where it goes. But we're really going to, a couple goals. I want you to look at the land acknowledgements. Um, remember to record your X, Y, and Z coordinates, because this is how I don't get lost. <laughs> I actually write down the coordinates, and I think Amar is going to remind me when I get in there, if I forget, to turn on my coordinate grids, right? Um, you'll find you'll find some uh, portfolios and uh, uh, pictures that you can take take things of and record stuff, um, and then you're going to explore the world that's around you. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to get into this world. There are three things I want you to do that we'll probably get to in this hour and a bit, and I'll be your guide. So I will, um, yeah, for the next forty five minutes, yeah, probably around there. <laughs> we will walk you through the world. Um, we're going to talk to some elders. We're going to visit the Petroforms, and we're going to help a village. We may not get to the village part, but we'll get, we'll see what, we'll see how we do. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into the world. So, you are going to open up Minecraft Education. Hopefully, everyone's got that. You're going to hit the play button. And this is this is the difference: is that the world is not really there. Uh, and yes, Ifra, 2,500 years is a very long time. The lesson is in the, the view library. So we're going to go to lessons, equity and inclusion. I'll do this one more time because it is confusing. Um, and, and find Manitowabi Aki. So I'll do that again. We go to play. And by all means, uh, t uh, you can always pause and play and see where you are. This is a a live session, so we can always come back to it if you if you want to wait and see where your, your uh, students are as we go through this world. And if you have any questions as we play, please type them into the chat or into that form. So play, view library, lessons, equity and inclusion, and find your Manitowabi Aki, and then you're going to hit create world. And so I'm excited. I'm going to hit create world. I probably should have loaded up my other world. <laughs> We'll see how, it, how well it goes and uh, how fast my internet can handle it. Amar, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I've been thinking about one thing that we haven't mentioned. It's all the original things you're going to see in this world. So when you're taking those pictures, you're going to notice a lot of stuff that aren't in regular Minecraft. I want you to keep that in your mind. Grab that snapshot. Take a nice picture of everything you've learned. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing people's reactions. Yeah, there are some special creatures uh, that are in here 
that are not in any other space um, or, or even blocks that are in here that are in another space. And so this, as I said, this world is a different place than you've ever seen before. Um, this, this was specifically created with, with Indigenous elders um, that we are meeting. And, and the space in which you are here and see already, there are things in here that I've never seen in a Minecraft world before. Just even looking at triangular shapes. Normally Minecraft is cubes, right? And so here we go, here's Cory. And then behind Cory are my elders. Uh, to my right, you'll find the land acknowledgements. Behind me is the river. I would recommend that you don't go near the river right now. You can get lost. Talk to Corey. He's the first person you want to see. If I want to make my coordinates, I'm going to hit exit or escape. I'm going to go to settings and then turn on coordinates, show coordinates. So that way I always know where I am. So right now my position is negative 330, uh, 332, 78, negative 14. So I can always come back to that spot if I ever get lost. So I'm going to be quiet right now. I'm going to play around for a bit. And then when I'm done my, my role, I will come back and bring you back just to talk where things are and move on from that point. But by all means, enjoy this world. Take the pictures. You have tobacco as well. Um, ooh. There's something interesting. And I'm going to walk over to the land acknowledgments. And it is in French as well. And if you want to talk to the difference between what people are here and what people's are in your home area. And it is also in a Schnabeck. We'll say too, if, if any of you are having trouble with uh, reading, uh, you can use the immersive reader. An immersive reader will, hopefully today will work. Um, will read, will read it to you, um, as well as you can you can change the languages that it's being read to you as well. So if you speak a different language, you can also have it read to you in a different language, um, and it is a nice way to understand the texts that are there and support those with a uh, who who have have the reading needs to support. Awesome, Ifra let us know. She was struggling a bit, but she finally found the world. She did get in. Teachers, students, kind reminder. I know sometimes when me and Jonathan are playing, we do go a little fast and we don't even realize it. This is a rewind and replay workshop. You can pause it, you can rewind it, you can play it. I'm gonna try not to talk so much. Enjoy the experience though. So I, I, the other thing, yeah, as you're in this world, uh, students can join the same world together if you if you are in the same um, uh, domain. And actually, I do encourage that not every student be in the same world, but that that some students do work together. You'll find later on as the challenges get up, it is a lot harder to do these challenges individually, which talks about community, which talks about building and and being part of a community is is one of the indigenous ways of knowing and relying on each other. So uh, feel free to have some of them work together if they would like to. Um, and all you have to do is go to your escape, hit the Zoom what looking Minecraft and start hosting and they'll give you a code for them to join in that instance. Anyone who's trying to join Jonathan's world right now is not going to be able to. You can't join us because we don't belong to your school board. So like if yeah. you're trying that right now, don't do it, please. <laughs>
Okay, so I don't know where everyone is at this point, but by now, hopefully you've talked to your guides as well as the three elders. Grandma talked about Sima. Vern talked about the fire and the importance of fire. And then Isaac gave you directional ideas of where to go. And sometimes it does help to point where the directions are. But just in case you get lost, the river is to the north. And there's a path just behind Isaac that is to the south. I'm going to travel down this path right now as part of where I'm going to explore next. I'm going to take my time. You can run a little faster down the path if you really want to. But there, there are things you're going to miss if you don't. And I, and I know as I walk through here, you might see some things that are important. And I already see something that is in not in any world that is ever in Minecraft that I've ever seen. And these are deer. Right? And that was one of the sacred animals that we saw as uh, that was identified in our in our things. You'll also notice some plants and the birch. And we'll learn more about birch as we go along. You may also find some bones that you can collect along the way, as well as some twigs that you may want to use as you see things. Try not to strip everything. We only use what we need to use, and we only gather what we need to gather. That is part of uh, a way of living and being. If we gather too many things, we're not taking care of the world that's around us. I'll keep walking. Oh. I don't know, Mara, have you ever seen these animals before? Not in Minecraft. Uh, have you ever seen one in real life? If I did, I would probably run. I've heard some bad stories about moose. Um, have you had better experiences than what I've heard, Jonathan? Uh, I've been almost attacked by one. <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't change my perspective. <laughs> no. And then here's another animal that you might see. Kind of flying around. Yeah, and in, 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 in real life, you can't walk up to a moose like this. <laughs> Gorgeous animal. Um, is that a hawk or an eagle? I think it's a hawk. The eagle has the white, or the bald eagle has a white. So as I walk around, you'll see some more teepees. You'll see some more teepees, which were used for construction and homes. And then you'll, as we, as it says down in the bottom of my screen, right above my hearts, <clears throat> head south and speak to Diane. And remember, Diane is the one in the blue dress. And so now I'm going to talk to Diane who says that ahead of you is Manitowabi, uh, uh, Manitowabi, the Petroforms, the place where our original instructions of how we live and respect Mother Earth were given. <clears throat> Continue on the path and I will let, I will tell you more about Manitowabi. And so as we head into the world, <clears throat> you are to find the Petroforms. Um, so I'll let you explore that a little bit more. The Petroforms are stone structures. But as you, as you go, there are five petroforms that you have to find. So at this point in time, there are five petroforms to find. And I would like you, that's going to be part of the lesson, is to learn about the stories that these petroforms have to offer you. Um, so if you're not here yet, that's fine. Hopefully you're followed down that path. Hopefully you haven't gotten too lost. But you can also record down negative 464, 79, 176. That is the coordinates where the petroforms start. And uh, in here, you might find a Mars favorite spiritual animal hidden in the petroforms. 
So I will be quiet once again as I go around the Petra forms. Uh, there is a button that you have to hit, so make sure you do find that button or it won't register that you found the Petra form. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as you go through here. And uh, I finally found it. Omar? I'm watching. I am watching. Do you see it? Oh, I was just talking with someone about that in chat, to be honest with you. That's the first time I've seen that. It's right there. That's that's so creepy. That's awesome. There's another one over here as well. So this is something uh, for our junior students. If you want to learn more about the red dress and the symbol of the red dress, that is a whole other lesson that is part of uh, uh, Indigenous. And, and you may you may want to explore what that red dress symbol means and why they are in the trees and why they are around. Um, sorry, I'll be quiet again. I just noticed that.
and I just found Amar's favorite <laughs> spiritual animal. Sasquatch. I noticed you just walked by some other things I haven't seen before in Minecraft. There's things like blueberries and... Oh, wow. Oh, strawberry. <laughs> I just can't help but remember, Jonathan, this is like the land 5,000 years ago. It, it looks so different now. <laughs> like... For sure. So I found three of the petroforms. I need to find two more. Just a reminder for students, make sure you press the brown button next to the petroform as well. It'll tell you with a message that you've gotten it. Okay, so now that we are here in this space, um, hopefully you found all five petroforms at this point in time. If you haven't, I'll tell you that they are framed by the snake on the uh, west end and the sky woman is on the east end. And so those are the two. If you've gone past the snake and past the sky woman, then you've gone too far in your spaces. So you may need to find them or you probably haven't hit the button as we've been saying a couple of times. And so it does say to go speak to Diane. I'll tell you that Diane is sitting in a brand new uh, petroform. It's called the circle. Um, it is meant to represent the, the truth and reconciliation as well as the growth and, and formations of our communities coming back together. Um, for a long time, our community, uh, the indigenous communities lost their languages and uh, for numerous reasons, um, and they had to rebuild. And uh, the circle represents that, that re rebirth, that growth, that continual uh, energy that constantly uh, forms. And that's why you'll see a lot of dancing is always done in circles. A lot of hoop dancing represents that, that, that formation and that power. And Diane has told me to go speak to Grandma Chickadee. And Grandma Chickadee is going to give you an important thing that you will need for the rest of your knowledge. And she gives you this amazing book that may sometimes not pop up because you have too many things in your inventory. And this book is a recipe book. And we're going to learn how to craft in Minecraft. And we have to head back to camp 
So now once you're in, the, in, in here, you're gonna walk back to the camp and we're gonna have to do some crafting. Uh, and you'll notice that when you touch a crafting table, it, it shows up just like it is here uh, in this uh, three by three grid. Sometimes on an iPad, it shows up a little differently. Um, so just uh, what I've learned to do is count my squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so that they are represented in that space. And then, and then you'll be able to craft. So right now it does say that I need sticks and I need birch bark because we're going to be building a birch wood canoe. Um, and so I need to find six sticks and 25 wigwas, which is birch bark. Try not to strip all the birch bark as we've talked about the land and taking care of the land. We only take what we need. If you want to offer Sima in return to the spirits that have given you what you've had, feel free to give thanks to that. Uh, even, even giving Sima to Grandma, I know it's a, vir a virtual game, but giving Sima to Grandma, uh, Chickadee, uh, will also show your, your, um, your thanks for the knowledge that she just gave you because the recipes in here are passed down from generations to generations to generations. And so I'm going to take a little walk again. Um, and uh, you can follow along or hopefully you now know what to do and I will meet you back at the village. Just a reminder if you're not sure how to give an item to someone else, when you're holding it in your hand, you just press the Q button and that's one way you can deliver the SEMA to Grandma Chickadee or whoever else you're thanking. Hold it, don't tap it. Now I owe you 50 cents.
And so it's told me I need to travel east down the river uh, where we meet our new camp. Um, but I need to craft that canoe first as I go along. Um, and uh, you've probably already realized that this is a totally different world than what you're used to, um, that it, it, it provides a, a different way of looking at things. And so hopefully you can, you're honoring the, the learning that you're doing and what, what you're, where you are. Um, and uh, we have about 50, well, 20 more minutes. So hopefully we, and we'll come back and we will, um, we might even get to the next space, we'll see. But right now I'm going to be building a birch bark canoe. This is where uh, it does come in handy to have some friends with you, if, if that, that helps to collect some of the things and to build, though this one is not as challenging to craft as, uh, as you need. As I need 25, I only have 15. And Amar, even this is new, right, to Minecraft. You can't just strip off bark. <laughs> Yeah, normally it wouldn't be like that, but I, I really like that. I don't, have you ever made your own canoe? I have not made my own canoe before. Um, I'm just pretend I have, but I do have a friend who does, and he told me this is the exact process they have to do. You have to wait for the bark to start peeling, just like it is in this game where you can see the yellow space, and that's when you know it's ready to be harvested. Yeah, because if you if you harvest the bark too early, you can actually kill the tree, and then and then you will you will um, you won't have that tree again to renew the things that you that you have, right? So it's a it's an important space to uh, remember. Now I forget what the recipe is because I don't have the greatest memory. So if you need to, you just go back to the book. It'll tell you. Whoops! Make sure you're not pointing at the crafting table. So I need five, 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 and then two, two, two in this formation. So the U and the V. That's always the helpful. Number important too. It's not just the formation. Make sure the numbers are matched up as well. Yeah, and so if you need to, I had twenty-five things. So what I'm doing is holding down until I can get the desired amount that I need to have in my space. I don't know if you know this one, Jonathan, but what really helps me is if I have the whole stack in my hand, like hold the whole stack, and if you right click on the space, it'll only put one down at a time. Uh, right click, not left click. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So there's my canoe and uh, a little things about, a little fun fact about the canoe. The canoe is totally made by hand and only ever uses one tool called the bone tool. And if you ever um, want to learn more about it, there's a great video um, from Isaac talking about it. It is perfectly symmetrical as well. So they they often use their, their space to, to create that and um, you only using their hands, their eyes and what they visualize in their head. So a great, uh, connection to your math, if you uh, um, where you are. So Ifra, uh, um, I know I noticed that you said I don't know where I am. Um, so do you remember where I said it's turn on the coordinate system? So I'm going to do that one more time. So hopefully you're you've paused it or you're at this point where you you can hear me talking to you. Uh, but we're going to go to settings and then turn on your show coordinates because that will tell you, and then you should be at negative three thirty six. 78 negative 13 is back at camp and then the other one the petroforms are in, are in a different space but at least you can get back to camp you know where you are and then you can worry about finding all the other stuff from camp um or that the river is north so if you're on a random river and you've flooded flowed through there um you can always find your space back but you can get lost in this world very easily I was going to say, Jonathan, worst case scenario, maybe they can just exit and start again. It might be simpler if they're not able to use those coordinates effectively. 
Yeah, sometimes I do tell my students to just restart the uh, computer and or like restart, not the computer, restart the game and uh, load up another world and they'll, they'll start back in the beginning again. Um, and, and, and the nice thing about the Minecraft is that you can always, uh, I mean, you do need the book, but uh, you can join someone else's world or you know what you need to do to get the birch bark canoe. Uh, and worst case, you just travel down the river and hope that you can, I mean, defy gravity, which happens in Minecraft all the time. <laughs> So I'm going to travel down the river and hopefully you'll start to see some new people, new things as we go along. I do need to go down this way, but for now, I do want to travel somewhere that you may start to see some new animals that you've never seen before in oh. Minecraft. Hello, oh. little beaver. Actually, I've never traveled up here. <laughs> This is actually the first place I went when I played the first time. If you're lucky enough too, there is a, a turtle. Oh, that's nice. They do put rapids. I think they put rapids in Whoop. to stop you from going to where you need to go. Or if you're like me, I'm just going to keep falling into it. I'm all turned around. I'm curious if you ever noticed this, Jonathan. Take a look at the sky. Do you notice you can see the stars and the constellations even though the sun is out? I believe there's something about navigation related to that, correct? Yes, there is. And so if you talk to Isaac, he did tell you what those stars meant and how they can help you with figuring out where you are in association to the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Right there. I'm hoping that I, oh, I know what I did. I went through the rapids somehow. <laughs> Come on, come on, can you? <laughs> you remember how I said I can get completely lost? <laughs> <laughs> What happens when I shouldn't explore on my own? Well, let me do it. <laughs> nope. That's OK. Hopefully you you've traveled down look. the river. Sorry, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, hopefully people have traveled down the river and uh, headed to where they need to go. I know where I am uh, in regards to where I need to be. Um, I just need to get to that space.
So when in doubt, you always get lost. <laughs> I have backup plans. <laughs> Not just you. I know Joshua's getting back on the road as well right now. <laughs> so about 10 more minutes. And uh, hopefully you have started to find that next village and, and by now know where you are and where you're going to go. That next village um, has the beginnings of the last challenges that are in Manitowabi Aki, where you learn about the community, where you learn about who you are um, and the spaces that are around you. Um, and so hopefully I have my, oops, I just threw my book. I don't have my canoe, but that's okay. Because the nice thing about Minecraft is that you can swim. <laughs> and walk on water. <laughs> the fascinations of, uh, of Minecraft world. Uh, Gravity and things elude me sometimes. I <laughs> mean, that's one of my favorite spots there. Where you can see the beavers in the water, and their dam like everything is yeah. to get there. You can also see a turtle in here if you do need to, if you do want to find it. I know what I'm doing later on. So I do want to point out one thing because I know what you're trying to do right now, Jonathan, because I've done the same exact thing. It is going to force you to go to the Petroforms and get the switches done. It's only because I have the book already. So if you, you have to go to the Petroforms and get the book. So once you have the book, you can travel wherever you need to go. Um, nice. Yeah, so this is the last the last section. I'm not we're not going to have too much time to go through here, um, but in this space, you will learn about community, the three sisters, about trade, about the buffalo uh, and the buffalo hunt. Um, and then the world does finish in this space. Um, but we'll give you about three or about eight more minutes to play around. Um, hopefully you've learned some things and then we're, I have a closing activity to bring us all back together. So I will see you back in about Seven minutes.
So I know Mr. Capel, uh, Capel's class uh, mentioned talking about working together. This is the space in which being by yourself kind of really stinks uh, because collecting the amounts that I need for to build my bramble is uh, quite a lot. <laughs> um, I need three sticks, four stones for each bramble, and I need 35 brambles. Um, so this one took me a long time to complete all by myself. So this is where I, for students, I do suggest that you work together in groups of three or four. Um, and it becomes a lot easier. And, and, and in fact, the, uh, Vern did talk about a community, uh, working together to collect that. I will not complete it all. <laughs> One. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call you back. And I know this is the hardest point, and I'm sorry that I have to call you away from the game that you're playing. I do apologize. You can hit escape. You can always go back to the game once you, you know, if you wanted to start. But I do want to kind of bring our learning to a conclusion. And um, as I said, this world is a special world in the sense that it's not meant to build or design, but to learn from. And so I want to see if you're actually learning from the things that you have in here. And so um, I want to know, what was one of the coolest animals that you saw while going through Minecraft? There are tons of spaces in which you have uh, in here. Um, what is one space that you um, learned about? So you already shared when you were playing, the Sasquatch is definitely one of my favorite animals. Which one was your favorite animal? I 
Well, I just found the bear. That's the first time I've seen the bear. Oh. Um, but I, I still, as much as I, the, the moose is still one of my favorite animals. Um, and I, I know, it, I know, I told you about my death, like that, it, that it, I had a very near experience with it. But it is just such a majestic animal, um, even while it's chasing you. It is a very majestic animal. <laughs> um, and, and the funny story was, I was on, the, I was, I, I was canoeing in Algonquin. And uh, we thought we were far enough away from the animal, uh, but obviously not. And it decided to charge us. We found out later there was a baby inside the inside of the uh, the brush that we didn't see. But uh, we paddled hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let that be a lesson for everyone, please. Keep your distance. Stay safe. Yeah, not like Minecraft where you can walk up to bears and animals and whatever you had. So what's oh Reese? Yeah, the bear and the robin. The robin was a cool one too. Seeing it fly around, I've never seen a robin in any of the spaces that I've been in Minecraft. Um, that was a really cool one. Um, the Sasquatch doesn't do much though. That's my only thing, Amar. The Sasquatch just just sits, just stands there. <laughs> Well, to be fair, Joshua agrees with the Sasquatch, and he also liked the buffalo. Aluka really liked the deer. Um, that's awesome. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. That's so cool. Okay, so let's. Uh, can you name one of the petroforms that you found? What was one of the coolest petroforms or the stories that you learned about um, that were on there? So, Amara, I don't know. What was one of the ones that you learned? new things about as you went through this world for the petroforms uh the story of the snake is the one that really resonated with me and i think it, it, at least my personal culture snakes are not normally associated with positive things but then in the shinabe culture they talked about how the snake symbolizes change um do, do you remember the entire story it's kind of going getting black zombie jonathan yeah, so the, the snake is in charge of making our pathways and rivers and, 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 and the ways in which we travel. So the, uh, the indigenous and the Anishinaabe, more importantly, understand that uh, the, the snakes were the reasons for their pathways and the, and, and the, and the trade in which they've had. Um, I think it's also important to note that not every, so we're learning about the Anishinaabe culture, but there are also the Inuit there, and there are many different types of uh, different different groups of indigenous people with different traditions and stories as as you go through here. So this is the Anishinaabe uh, people uh, or the Anishinaabe. Um, there's also the Chippewa, there's uh, the Haudenosaunee, um, the Cree, uh, and there's many, many different uh, different groups that are out there. So what was someone else's favorite petroform? I know for me, it's Sky Woman. I do enjoy that one there um, because it, it relates to that creation story. The Serpent Reese, yeah, that's awesome. The Serpent was really long too, and, it, and I, I'm like, yeah. I was very surprised at how long it was and where it kept going down the rock face. That was really cool. Um, and the new one too, around Truth and Reconciliation is always a, a fun one to, uh, to see in there. One design was I really like the spider to be honest with you and I am scared of spiders usually but design wise that was gorgeous. <laughs> okay so I have two more questions to wrap us up. Um, what was needed to build your birch bark canoe? There was some things that we had to go around and collect um, that was part of the crafting. What was needed to build your birch bark canoe? I know we have like nine classes on on here uh, joining us today, but uh, you have all been amazing and you're probably still playing Minecraft, which is still cool too. I know pulling people away from the world is kind of hard to do, but you are all amazing. And I've loved all the answers. So huge shout out to Joshua, who's always been part of the conversations. Farfet, Mohammed. Okay, so I'll give a Reese couple more seconds. Yeah, Reese. Oh man, Reese has been in there. Um, so part of the name is there, right? Like you need you needed you needed to know something. Oh, the turtle. Oh, you found the turtle gone. That's awesome. 
as one of the animals, but what was needed to build your birch bark canoe? What was needed? Sticks and bark. Karapika, yes, Reese, awesome. Sticks and birch, yeah. And, and um, birch bark canoes, I didn't know if you know some are, they build it from the outside in. So the waterproofing, everything is built on the outside. And then, and then they remove the, the, the skin or like the structure inside. And then that's what you're left with, with the birch, um, which is opposite of what you normally start with a canoe. You start with the inside and you work your way out. But uh, it's awesome. Oh, Joshua puts the crafting bench. Yeah, you can't build your birch bark without the crafting <laughs> bench. <laughs> and Korapika, great job. Mentioned the sticks and the bark as well. Great job, everyone. Okay, our last question. Write one teaching you learned from the elders and knowledge keepers. So what was one thing that you are thankful for, for learning about? Um, maybe it's something new that you never knew about uh, an Anishinaabek culture. Um, what is something, or maybe it's a question that you still have. I, I, I didn't put that down, but maybe there's a question that you have that you want to inquire more about and you want to reach out to the elders that are around you to learn more about, about, about that land. You know, Amar, you've always had some pretty cool insights as you learned. I know with me, I always learn new things, but is there something that you uh, had in mind? I mean, that, that whole lesson with the sun and just, sorry, I, I said it wrong, the Sima, right? The tobacco, sh using that to show thanks, to show appreciation. That's what I always think about when I play this game. Um, I don't know about you, Jonathan, I know I can be a lot more thankful and a lot more appreciative to the people around me. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to carry tobacco in my pockets all the time, but I just, anytime someone helps me, even if it's just with words, even if it's with something small, just show that appreciation. And that's, that's such a huge way to walk through life. And that, that's what I think about every single time I play this. Yeah, the more I've learned about Anishinaabek culture and about our indigenous cultures, the, 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 the respect for our elders and the respect for knowledge. And that knowledge is not something that we just take, that it is something that is part of, it becomes us, it becomes who we are and the people in which we, we learn from, um, we name, we learn and we grow, um, I think is an important piece of culture that we have to keep in mind um, and to be thankful in some way for it. So whether it's, whether it's giving tobacco or if it's, if it's, just saying thank you. So I know all students to say thank you to your teachers that are there to be part of it, um, but also thankful to each other. And I am thankful for the students that I've learned from as well. Uh, it, it's a reciprocal process. It's not just because of elders or young people, right? Joshua, I forgot most of the things they said, but I do remember uh, Chickadee saying tobacco uh, was a gift. That's right. That's one of the things. And you can always go back to with this game. And, and now that you've played it, you're, you can be more wise to the things that are out there and what they what they can teach you. Um, and there is more lessons to follow up uh, later on, with, uh, learning about uh, treaties and territories and understanding, especially um, those of you who are in Quebec, thinking about the peace and treat, uh, peace and friendship treaties that are have been signed along the way and what they how they are different than some of the territorial treaties that were signed as well uh, and what they actually mean. Um, so uh, Ms. Mr. Capel, the sticks are by the uh, trees and they're inside the path. So like once you pass the path a little bit more, you will find uh, some of the sticks. They're kind of in the forest. Just don't go too far because then you get lost. Um, I find a lot of luck between the petroform and the village, like smack in the middle. Kind of where that little hut is in the middle with the crafting station, that's the one where I find a lot. And logically, like I realized this last time I was playing it, it's always somewhere underneath the tree. So try not to look at like the open green parts, go under the tree. <laughs> yeah, rocks are by rocks, sticks are by trees. <laughs> Bones are, are randomly throughout the place. And then, and then you have your berries, which are, are important parts of the land that we take care of too, right? So, um, I know, uh, so our time is coming to an end uh, as we go through here. Uh, so it's been very nice to talk to each and every one of you uh, today. Uh, thank you for, uh, from me. Um, oh, Reese, water is a powerful, powerful and fire is a gift. Oh, that's amazing too, right? Fire is life um, and everything. But I wanna say a huge shout out and to 
um, Mr. Capel's class. Um, there's been a couple other ones in here who have uh, uh, Mrs. Miss v uh, Veenkamp's class, uh, Edward, Costa, Charlie, I don't know, um, um, Amar, do you have anyone that you want to say a quick shout out to? Miss Hassan's class as well. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, Rish, Joshua, everyone, it has been such a pleasure to explore this with you. And I, I know I learned a couple of new things. Um, we found a couple more Easter eggs, Jonathan, so that was awesome. Thank you for having me in that journey. And everyone, right now, we are going to turn you back over to your teacher. So if you're in class with your teacher right now, what I always like to do when I was a student is at this point, I would sit quietly, put on my biggest smile, and just make eye contact with your teacher till they tell you what to do next. If you're connecting virtually, you might want to send a message to your teacher. You might want to check. I'm not sure if you're using Google Classroom or D2L or whatever. Send a message to your teacher. OK, I'm done. What am I doing next? Check your assignments. And one more time, thank you all so much for joining us. Please go back, play the world as well. It's saved on your device. Um, you can always continue at any point. I know we didn't finish. Thank you, everyone. Be safe.